I'm Sister Rosemary Greco, and we're here at Wisdom House Retreat Center in Litchfield, Connecticut, with our third annual program called Exploring Catholic Culture. And the theme for this weekend's program is Jesus and the, the Culture of Peace. And for this program, uh, which has been over the years co-sponsored with Fairfield University and their Chair of Catholic Studies Department, this program this weekend is being offered by Father John Deere, a Jesuit, a Jesuit priest who is an internationally known voice for peace and nonviolence. And this weekend, as we study Jesus in the culture of peace, uh, I'd like to ask Father John Deere to speak to why is it so important that we understand and come to know the nonviolent Jesus, especially in these days and these times that we live in. Father John Deere. Well, here at Wisdom House, which I like to think of as a school of peace and nonviolence, we've been talking about uh, the world, the culture of violence and war, which we're all surrounded by. And I've been proposing that the gospel of Jesus is a call to become people of peace and nonviolence and to work for and welcome a new culture of peace and nonviolence. So I see the world as, uh, as a world of total violence. There are 30 wars happening, billions of people living in poverty, one billion people starving to death, 30 to 40,000 children die of starvation every day. We have 20 to 25,000 nuclear weapons. We're headed toward global warming, and we're surrounded by violence in all kinds of forms. And we're all full of violence ourselves. We're, we've become people of violence and used to war, as if war is the will of God. But Gandhi and Martin Luther King and Dorothy Day and all the great saints are pointing this back to the gospel of Jesus and saying, not only is war and violence wrong and not the will of God. Violence doesn't work. War doesn't work. Violence in response to violence always leads to further violence. It's a never-ending downward spiral. War never leads to peace. It always sows the seeds for future wars. And war can't stop terrorism because war is terrorism. And so we're called to break that cycle of violence. And they use this clumsy word of nonviolence to become people who don't retaliate, people who break down the structures of violence and to become people of nonviolence and peace. Peaceful means are the only way to a peaceful future and the God of peace. And so they talk about this theology and spirituality and practice of nonviolence beginning from the truth that we're all one with all people around the planet. Uh, that every human being is our very sister and brother. And as we enter into this truth of reality, we could never hurt anybody again or be silent as people are suffering and dying. So nonviolence is active love, seeking the truth of our common unity, reconciling with everyone, allowing God to disarm our hearts of the violence within us, and then practicing a universal love with the one exception that there's no cause, however noble, no matter what they tell us, for which we will ever again support the taking of a single human life. So Gandhi and King, talking about this culture of peace, say we've got to begin to be nonviolent toward ourselves. From now on, we're not going to be violent toward ourselves. We're going to cultivate an interior nonviolence. And we're going to be nonviolent toward everybody we meet for the rest of our lives. Nonviolent toward our spouses, our children, our parents, our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers, everyone in the churches, everyone in our local community, and everyone in the world. And we're going to use nonviolence as a creative, active, public methodology towards social change. As Gandhi shows, picking up the salt, getting the British Empire to leave India. Dr. King shows in the Civil Rights Campaign, marching into Birmingham, bringing down the segregation laws and nonviolently changing the country. And around the world, millions, billions of people are engaged in nonviolent social change. We all have to be part of the global grassroots movement of nonviolence, working for the abolition of war, poverty, executions, nuclear weapons, global warming, and violence of every kind, and to begin to create a new culture of peace and nonviolence. Now, what we've been talking about here at Wisdom House is that for the Christian, nonviolence is at the heart of our, our lives because Jesus was nonviolent. Gandhi said Jesus was the most active person of nonviolence in the history of the world. And then he goes on to say, and the only people who don't know that Jesus is nonviolent are Christians. I like to put the question, was he violent or nonviolent? And I've come to the conclusion is, to that, is that it's the only thing you can say for sure about Jesus. 
is that he's actively, creatively, publicly nonviolent. And if we're going to follow him, we have to be people of nonviolence and work for a new culture of nonviolence. So he has these great teachings, love one another, be compassionate, hunger and thirst for justice, uh, take up the cross and lay down your life in love for everybody. And the most political teaching of all, love your enemies. That's what it means to be a Christian, to be a person of nonviolence who practices a universal love of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, he says. They shall be called the sons and daughters of the God of peace. We make peace because we're children of God and God is a God of peace. And he practices nonviolence everywhere and then he goes into Jerusalem and confronts the institutions of violence through an act of uh, nonviolent civil disobedience and he gets arrested and tortured and executed by the Roman Empire. And he goes deeper into nonviolence, even forgiving his killers. And the story goes, he comes back and says, peace be with you. Now you walk the road of nonviolence into the world of violence and war. You go to your own Jerusalem. You practice peace like I have and uh, become instruments of God's disarming love for the world. That's the call of the Christian. I don't think you can be a Christian and make war or work for war or be violent or support nuclear weapons, much less racism, sexism, executions, or any form of violence. To be a Christian is to be a follower of the nonviolent Jesus and therefore to be a practitioner of nonviolence. And everybody is called to do their part to welcome a new culture, a new world of nonviolence. That's the challenge. And here at Wisdom House, we've been talking about the spirituality of that. How do we cultivate interior peace and nonviolence? How can we worship God as a God of peace and nonviolence? How can we help the church become a community of nonviolence? And how do we go forth into the world and do our bit? Everybody's got to do something for peace and justice. That's what the great saints teach us. And that's my hope, that we can all be part of this growing movement of nonviolence, to say no to the U.S. wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, no to nuclear weapons and executions and global warming and corporate greed, and simplify our lives, really be nonviolent with everyone, and help create a movement that's going to change the world uh, as followers of the nonviolent Jesus. And that's my hope and prayer. Uh, that we might all really come to know God as a God of peace, love, and nonviolence. That we will discover to be human is to be people of peace, love, and nonviolence. To follow Jesus is to be a person of nonviolence. And that God's reign, which is at hand, calls us to create not war or poverty or nuclear weapons, but all new kinds of structures and communities of nonviolence and love and justice. So may the God of peace be with you. Mm -hmm.